to talk through different ways to speed up dbo.tuneme. At the top of the solution file is some code to turn off a trace flag and then to use dbcc trace status. If you haven't run this solution file before, you can just check and see, do I have trace flag 7412 on? Because part of the demo at the beginning assumes that you don't have this trace flag on. All right, so the first thing to figure out, which statement in the procedure is slowing this down the most? That's gonna really help us in terms of focusing our attention on speeding this up. There's different ways to figure this out. And one tool that I often like to use is to use actual execution plans. We can turn on actual execution plans with this button here, or we can run control M to enable them. And with those enabled, if we execute this procedure, we will get actual execution plans. But in this case, it can be a little bit troublesome because I've just had this running a little bit of time and I'm gonna go ahead and stop it before it gets too far. Now, my messages tab doesn't have a bunch in it, but if I go over here to my execution plan tab, because this procedure uses a loop to populate index maintenance tests, look, I am not getting actual execution plans for just the slowest statement in this procedure. I'm getting it for everything. So I just ran this a little bit and if I scroll to the bottom here, I am already at query 78 because as it loops through that, if I'm gonna run that loop tightly for a long time, I'm gonna get a plan for every execution and I'm really stress testing management studio. <laughs> and I may, if I run it to completion, I may crash management studio. So though I love actual execution plans as a tool, sometimes they just aren't practical if I need to run a whole stored procedure. It's very convenient to have another method to get the execution plan for the part that's slow. So I have now disabled actual execution plans. This is uh, this button in Management Studio is no longer highlighted there, and I'm gonna try a different way. I am going to grab the procedure SP who is active. I already have this installed in my master database. You can download this at whoisactive.com. This procedure is written by a fellow named Adam Mechanic, and you can read all about the licensing there. This procedure is totally free to use. I'm going to put this call for who is active into another session so that I can execute the slow procedure from one session and then spy on it with SP who is active from another session. Now I'm getting this red underlined because I have who is active over in the master database, but I can actually run it from this context. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start up the slow procedure here. There it goes, it is off to the races, the very slow races, and now I can spy on it from the second session. And I can see what statement in the procedure it's on in the SQL text there. Now I happen to know that this select coalesce is at the end of the procedure. This is the statement that's bringing information back. And I can see, hey, it's, running this statement for a while. Now I'm running SP who's active with the get plans equals one. The get plans parameter, I've said, yes, I do want the query plan. So over here, I have a query execution plan that I can click on and it will open the plan in a new window. Looking at this plan, I can see, well, this is not the smallest execution plan in the world. Parts of the plan are using parallelism. Over here, I've got these double lines that are indicating parallelism and also specific parallelism related operators. I'm, this is where we're bringing together the data from all five of the temp tables. So here's page numbers one, there's page numbers two. Down here in this branch, we've got page numbers three. We've got another reference to page numbers three there. So you can see these are the joins that are happening between these tables. Here's, we're bringing it all up and we're doing at this point a full outer join with page numbers four and everything else. And then here's page numbers five coming in for a full outer join as well. 
all of the costs in this plan are estimated costs. So SQL Server's estimating that 66% of this is actually these two merge joins going on here and that other things are relatively low cost, but I don't really know how that turned off, turned out. And when I'm looking at, I just clicked on, I highlighted this pipeline here. I can see that the estimated number of rows flowing through there is 8,335, but how many actually did flow through there? Well, I just pulled this plan out of the, the cache while the query was running. This only has estimated rows in it by default in SQL Server. Well, that is, it is helpful though for me to be able to see, I've been able to observe by running SP who is active in sampling, I was able to see that this query was running for quite a while. You know, when I refreshed who is active, this stayed there, it didn't just disappear. I don't have the full runtime for it, but I do know that it was running long. And, and I do know that the, the estimated query plan had high estimated costs. Now, queries can be estimated low or estimated high. So this estimated cost is just showing me based on the information it had, and it can create statistics, SQL Server can create statistics on temp tables, which we're using. So it was able to create statistics where it needed. It can create column level statistics on those temp tables and it estimated this out to be fairly high cost, 537. Now, I, that's not an exact estimate of time or anything. I just know that that you know many costs for queries are below one. So that yes, that is a fairly high estimated cost. So I have a little bit of information. Well, if I want more information, I can, I can get it. There's a trace flag we have now in SQL Server that can even allow me to get some more information about queries while they are running. Because maybe I have a query that is slow running from an application server. Now, turning on this trace flag can have different amounts of impact on different versions of SQL Server. And you can read more about that in this blog post on more recent versions of SQL Server. And I'm running on 2017 here. It has a lower impact. So you're gonna wanna, before you use this anywhere where performance matters, or even anywhere where you're measuring performance, you wanna look at it, this post and figure out, okay, for my exact version of SQL Server, what may the impact be? And then I always very much believe in being cautious because even if the estimated impact is 2%, Hey, you know, it's always fun to be the one who runs into the edge condition where the impact is more, right? So I believe in proceeding with caution, but in my version of SQL Server on this test instance, I'm pretty comfortable doing this. So I'm gonna turn on trace flag 7412 globally on my little test instance here. So now anything that's using my instance, right? So this trace flags on everywhere. This trace flag does give me extra powers. So I'm gonna go ahead and run, this is the same call to the slow procedure. I'm gonna run this in this session, all the same parameters here, but now I'm gonna run SP who is active again. And notice that I haven't changed anything about SP who is active. At this sample, it was on the step of creating a clustered index before it populated the table. And now I just rechecked. And now at this point, it's running the select query at the end still running the select query at the end, right? This takes a while to finish up. So still running the select query at the end. Well, let's check out the query plan now. Query plan looks pretty similar, right? But hovering over, I hovered over this pipeline again, and now check it out. We are now getting information. At the time of this sample, I can see at the time of the sample, how many rows had flowed through here. And I can see that a little more of the estimate had flowed through there. I have turned on something that allows live query plans to be viewed. And while SP who is active isn't giving me an exact live view, I can see lots of information about how many number of rows have flowed through at the time I sampled. So at this point in the plan, if I look through here, no rows had actually flown through. It wasn't done with all of these joins. So we're at zero rows flowing out of the merge join at the time I sampled. But this is an interesting thing that now I can even get for queries that are in progress, that information out of them. But wait, 
there's more. <laughs> Let's head back to our script. And I'm going to go ahead and start up the query again. This is the exact same query. I just have another copy over it of it. And now I'm going to open Activity Monitor. So I've gone into Object Explorer. I have Object Explorer already connected to my little test instance here. And I've right clicked on the instance name and said I want to bring up Activity Monitor. Now I have not always been the biggest fan of Activity Monitor because if I really want to monitor a system, do I really want a bunch of different people having activity monitor open and pulling it, pulling it, pulling it and not recording it anywhere. I would much rather have a legitimate monitoring system pulling once, keeping the data and having people hit the monitoring system located on completely different gear than my production server is on, right? That's still true. Still not the biggest fan of activity monitor, but there is something I can do now. Now that I have this trace flag on, I can look at queries that are running. I can right click on them and I'm in the processes section of Activity Monitor and I can say show live execution plan. Well, my query by now has actually already finished. So let's go ahead, let's start it again because I took too long talking and wait for it to show back up in here. Now it's running through different tasks, like running different commands in there. So I've got to kind of wait for Activity Monitor to refresh for things that are running super fast. This isn't gonna be perfect, right? But now I'm gonna say show live execution plan there. And this can, of course, there, you know, there's overhead for having that trace flag on. But since I now have that trace flag on, I can see some information about what parts of this are actually running. So these parts that have 100% on them and the lines aren't moving, those parts are done. We can have numbers above 100% and that's valid. I'm zooming in and freezing here. We have gotten more rows than we expected. This is the percentage of the rows we're expecting. So this 100% doesn't mean 100% completed. It's really talking about the percentages there. If I hover over, let's, let's see if I can get a line there. On the pipelines, I'm only getting the estimated number of rows. But if I look at a specific operator, and it's an operator that reports this, on operators, I can see actual number of rows. So 6,500 flowed through this compute scalar. The query finished up and so now all the dotted lines have gone solid. My progress up here is 100% and I can get some information about different amounts of actual rows through this if I want. So that is pretty cool in terms of getting information about what happened and looking at the progress of different operators. So my merge join is at 100%. Here's the number of rows that flew through there. I can see all the estimated costs, number of executions, et cetera. Looking like this query, who starts with select coalesce, right? It's looking like this query. This is the one that when we look at, hey, what's going on? We're always finding that query. <laughs> We're not finding the little queries that are all in the loop populating the table. But we don't know yet, okay, exactly how long is it taking and how long are different parts of the query taking. 